Russian leader Vladimir Putin has issued a decree to increase the size of the Russian army, which will now number 2.389 million people. Of these, there will be 1.5 million military personnel, which means an increase in the number of Russian soldiers by 180,000. The document comes in force on December the 1st of this year. Consequently, Russia will suffer significant losses on the battlefield and it seems that the pace of recruitment for monetary incentives is failing to meet the Russian military leadership's demand for over 30,000 soldiers per month. Ukrainian military expert Sahih Zaguretz says that this shortfall has caused a sharp increase in compensation for contract soldiers. It is known that one-time payments for signing a contract have risen to nearly 1 million rubles, which is more than $10,000. In Moscow, even up to 2 million rubles. However, in any case, the rate of collecting dead souls in Russia still does not meet the needs. Now, Russia has an extremely high number of casualties and this decree, we can assume, is an attempt to increase the number of contract soldiers. If we are talking about increasing the size of the Russian army, these actions will bring results only in the first half of 2025, because this decree will only increase conscription. In any case, Russia does not have time to quickly provide new personnel with equipment and commanders. Therefore, it is likely to rely on a gradual increase in numbers. Ukrainian military expert Alexander Kovalenko says that Putin's decree shows the depletion of equipment reserves and the awareness of the looming crisis in 2025, but such an approach can only accelerate the collapse of the Russian armed forces. Russia does not have and will not have tanks or other armored vehicles for such a number of people. Russia doesn't have nearly that many tanks and the Soviet army didn't even have that many armored fighting vehicles. Today, the Russian army is already facing problems with equipment which is running out in warehouses, arsenals and storage centers where it has been stored since the Soviet era. That is, in the near future, Russia will be fighting in the full sense of the word with marching battalions, battalions consisting exclusively of infantry with a minimal mechanized component. He emphasized, in this regard, the Ukrainian armed forces must now prepare for the fact that the positions of the Ukrainian army will be stormed by numerous human resources which must be destroyed not selectively but en masse in order to save ammunition and reduce the effectiveness of the quantitative factor that is, cluster munitions and area effect weapons are one of the solutions to the emerging problem, he emphasizes. The same FPV drones from the precision strike category will increasingly have to become volume trickily detonating in the air over enemy groups saturated with damaging elements distributed over an area. Putin's decree on increasing the army is a clear sign of the exhaustion of equipment reserves and the awareness of the impending crisis of 2025 associated with the compensation of mechanized losses. But with the right approach, the decision to fight with numbers will only accelerate the collapse of the Russian armed forces, the expert adds. One of the most predictable features of Russia's war against Ukraine has been the apocalyptic threats from Russian ruler Vladimir Putin every time Western leaders have tried to boost the firepower of the Ukrainian army, writes Con Coughlin, the Telegraph's defense and foreign affairs editor. According to him, Putin's pathetic rhetoric is designed to intimidate Western leaders into abandoning their pro-Ukrainian stance. The author recalls that the tactics of the bully autocrat began days after Russia launched its so-called special military operation to conquer Ukraine. At the same time, in order to deter Western interference, Putin warned that the West would face dire consequences if it supported Ukraine's fight for freedom. He has since made numerous references to Russia's massive nuclear arsenal, typically when NATO leaders are considering ways to improve their military support, such as providing tanks and F-16 fighter jets. One of his most explicit threats came in February after French President Emmanuel Macron unilaterally proposed deploying NATO forces to the Ukrainian battlefield. Putin responded by warning that such a deployment risks a nuclear conflict and the destruction of civilization. Coughlin writes, He stresses that nothing has come out of these threats, not least because China 
on whose support the Kremlin relies to keep the Russian economy afloat, has made it clear that it will not tolerate Moscow using any nuclear weapons. While Putin talks, Western arms shipments continue to flow into Ukraine, greatly enhancing its ability to defend itself against Russian aggression. That's not to say, the Russian leader's remarks haven't had an impact on the debate over military support for Ukraine. Joe Biden, in particular, has been spooked by Putin's threats and has often delayed providing vital military equipment for fear of triggering a broader escalation of the conflict, the article says. At the same time, according to the journalist, Putin has good reason to fear Ukraine's use of Western-made storm shadow long-range missiles to strike targets inside Russia as they could destroy 250 Russian bases near the border that are used for almost daily attacks on Ukraine's civilian infrastructure. If the Ukrainians can consolidate their recent gains in Kursk, Putin will indeed be in trouble. So, empty threats are needed again. In truth, the Russian leader desperately hopes that Donald Trump will win the presidential election in November and thereby save his own skin by brokering an agreement to end the war, hopefully one that leaves Moscow in control of large swathes of Ukrainian territory. Such an outcome would be disastrous. The window of time to press the Ukrainians' superiority is becoming increasingly narrow. Western leaders must seize the initiative and let Ukraine win this war. The author concludes, Russian leader Vladimir Putin recently threatened Britain and the United States with war in response to Ukraine's likely permission to strike Russia, a move he said would significantly change the very nature of the conflict by forcing Moscow to respond.